came together. This is what we're gonna make today. <laughs> Do you love it? Oh my goodness, I can't even get over how cute it is. This is one I made copied from the catalog. This is the mini curvy keepsake. Oh, I just dropped my die, I'm gonna have to go after that. Mini curvy keepsake box. <laughs> All right, so that's a curvy keepsake, tiny keepsake stamp set coordinates with the dies. And this tiny keepsakes stamp set is seven piece clean mount stamp set. Take a look at the pieces in the curvy keepsake treat box dies. We've got one, two, three, four, five different shaped tags, snowflake dies to cut out this image. And you get two dies. I love that. So you can make multiples in one pass and two pine bow dies. So you can make multiples in one pass. I love that. Stampin' Up's really thinking. So that's this one we're going to make today. Isn't he cute? What do you guys think of the new mini curvy keepsake? At Bingo tonight. This is the one we're making at Bingo tonight. I'll have a video for this one next week. Oh, cute. New catalog bingos tonight. Can't wait to see ya. If you're registered for that. Irene says, so adorable. Thank you. All right, let me show you the rest of the supplies you need. So this is so quick and easy. Tiny keepsakes bundle. My little tag image is from Boo to You. These little um, sentiment images are really perfect with the tags from the keepsake. I wonder if just a little creepy would fit in the square. Let me take a look here. It's a pretty close fit. I'd need to stamp it and see. I think it'll fit. All right, so boot to you for my sentiment. I'll just slide these guys back. I'm dropsy today. I don't want to lose any tags. Julie says, do we bring anything for bingo tonight? No, bingo is just bring yourself and your good luck. May the force be with you, Julie. I'll see you in a little while. <laughs> All right, so besides the bundle, stamp set, I've got stampin' pads here, memento, tuxedo black, old olive, and pumpkin pie. And I've got the um, crumb cake twine from Nature's Twine right here. A uh, little candy filling for my pumpkins. I got these tiny little milk or candy bars, little minis. I've been meaning to see if I can find an Amazon link for them. They're... I, they're European candies. We uh, got some on the cruise. And I took some home to see if I could find them. And so I just haven't done it yet. So keep an eye. Maybe on the blog I'll post a link if I find them. There are three of them fit so perfect in here. And with the little purple wrapper. I thought they were fun Halloween candies. I'll see if I can find you a link. That's what I'm going to use on the inside. The mini curvy keepsake fits on one five and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. So you can get two boxes from one sheet of cardstock. Really good value. I got a scrap of Old Olive and a scrap of Crumb Cake. I'm gonna grab my Big Shot and cut those two dies real quick. Let me just slide these guys to the side. You're gonna die when you see how fast these are. Like we're gonna be on for, I don't know, 10 minutes today, it's gonna be crazy. All right, so for my there's my big shot. I'm going to run my box first. Let's see if I can run both. You know how much I love to run everything in one pass. Ha <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Makes me happy. I just tipped you guys over. Am I making you seasick? Let's see if I can do this without tanking you guys over again. All right. There's my little stitched tag. Isn't that cute? All the tags have that built-in stitching for this set. And these tags, of course, will be good for so much more than just this mini curvy keepsake. So there's our pieces. Let me slide this to the side. Now you're going to want to protect your work surface when you're stamping your curvy keepsake. I love these two blocks of pattern. Now this is going to be fantastic for card making, too but we're going to gingham pattern a couple of the sides on our treat box. So I'm gonna pop out all these little extras so that they don't get in the way while we're stamping. And then I've got post-its. And I'm going to 
mask the bottom of my box right at the score line and then I'm going to mask the front and the back panels of the box there right at the corner. I've got my pumpkin pie stampin' pad and I'm going to ink up my gingham with pumpkin pie. We're going to do this two times. We want to center this tab in the gingham and stamp. You got to just make sure that the edges, the fat rounds of this box are underneath your gingham completely. All right, so there's my gingham pattern on one. We're gonna flip and do the same thing. We're using this side that has the slot, not the handles. The slot side curves over the top. The handle side are the front and the back, so we'll put the jack-o'-lantern face on the front. Okay, this is what we're making today. You can catch me on the replay, Gina. Oh, I cute. I can't even help myself with this box. Next up, I'm going to make an apple. All right. Getting them again. Now, my advice to you here is to use a little bit extra pressure where that slot is and really give your ink a second to transfer because the dye makes a little bit of a, a bevel edge around that slot and you could end up with a sketchy pattern. Even with the extra pressure and the extra time, you could still see the bevel just a little bit in the pattern. Once you get it all put together, it won't make much a difference, but take your time when you're stamping. All right, so slide these guys to the side. Let's get rid of our paper. Gonna keep on stamping here. Now we need the Memento Tuxedo Black and the Boot to You from the Boot to You stamp set. And I want my tag to the right. See the holes to the right there? And the Boot to You will fit just perfect on this little oval. Ta da! My fun little pumpkin face. We're gonna choose one side, it doesn't matter which, handle up. We're going to ink up the jack-o'-lantern face, and you want it a little bit higher than center. Trust me on that. It'll look better if it's just a bit higher than center. Otherwise, he's like downcast. His face looks down. He's hard to see. One more bit of stamping. Got old olive and my scrap of old olive. This little leaf. Oh, I didn't grab it. I meant to grab that. This one's from Harvest Hello's. That's going to be the online classroom class for October. So keep your eyes peeled for some information on that too. Kathy says so cute. Thank you, Kathy. All right, here's the part where we got to do a little fussy cutting. And I'm just going to cut right on the old olive line. I cut the stem off. No sense in trying to get around that stem. There is a little leaf punch, I think, in the new bundle that I just ordered. I'll show you which one. Maybe it'll work for this. It's a stamp punch combo. It's in that little all occasion set. I'll learn the names of things soon. In the meantime, I got a catalog next to me. I'll show you what I mean. It'll be here Tuesday and we'll try it out and see if it works for our pumpkin leaves because there is no pumpkin leaf on the apple builder punch. So I'm wondering if this one will work. If you guys didn't see my catalog tour from the 4th, check it out. There's lots of um, great tips in that catalog tour. Um, going the wrong way. This one right here. See this little leaf? I think that this one might work instead. So we'll try that. But in the meantime, I'm fussy cutting my little pumpkin leaf from Harvest Hellos. All right, let's go ahead and put this together. Now I've learned something about this box. These score lines are really strong. This die gives you a good, strong impression. So first I just lightly fold them inside out and then I'll take my bone folder and roll each of the panels of the box. Go gentle, you don't wanna tear your handle here. Let's see, so it almost looks like a flower. All right, so we've rolled up our box. Now we'll put it 
inside out. Thank you, thank you for letting me know. Let me know how you're hearing me. I've got my little candies here. Tiny little candy bars. Love them. I'll look for a source. And those of you who are in world markets, European markets, you might be able to find these little milkos better than in the U.S. So just fold my handles back a little bit, like 90 degree angle. Don't work the creases on this box too hard. If you work the creases too hard here, they will crack and your box will look all fuzzy. We don't want that. Now you're gonna bring the two handles in together and slide one of the slots over. Once you've secured that, then you can fill your box. And trust me, you wanna fill your box before you close this side because when you put the tag on, it's gonna be tied to the handle so you won't be able to open the box and put the candy back in without untying the tag, okay? So there's our little jack-o'-lantern. Cute, right? All we gotta do is tie on the tag and embellish with the little leaf. So I'm gonna go from the back to the front here. And I'm gonna slide my tag and then tie a bow. I don't always knot things, like sometimes I'll just start with the loop instead of with a knot, but with this one I needed that little knot. And it also secures your box closed. Now this box is closed until somebody actually goes in, opens it to take out the candy. Candy in, then tag on. Ask me how I know. No, don't ask me how I know. You just keep that between us, okay? All right, now I got my ribbon scissors. Cut this away from the spool. And I'm gonna grab a little half a dimensional. And I'm gonna put that little half a dimensional. This is important, because you don't want this, you want this box to remain reclosable. So do you see where you're gonna put the dimensional for your leaf? If you've got a half a dimensional right there, then you can still untie the tag, open the box, and then you're able to reclose the box. If you get it too close to the handle or on the handle, if you stuck it to the handle, you wouldn't be able to open the box without, without peeling it off. So keep that in mind. And then you can add the little leaf, making sure that it doesn't interfere with the handles. You see that? It's a cute little embellishment, but still leaves the box fully functional. My bow's a little loosey-goosey here. Tighten it up. There it is. Boo to you, boo to you, and boo to you. So quick and easy. Thanks for watching, guys.